1057 The Point, Everything Alternative, Backstage Big Summer Show number five. Ladies and gentlemen, Catfish and the Bottlemen have joined me. How's, how's it going, guys? All good, man. Just Epic. Had it. It's yeah. great, great show, isn't it? I decided something tonight during your set. All right, and I, this is, I know that this is going to take some working and there's some legalities here involved. I realized not only do I want to be in a band, uh, but I specifically want to be in your band. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. I, but here's the thing. Same I, is. I don't have a lot to offer. I can't sing. I can't play an instrument. Uh, I'm not particularly organized. So I don't really have a lot to offer, but I figured maybe you needed a bald guy in the Sound band. Sound like our tour manager. Probably replace me. <laughs> be fine. I, I mean, I'm will, like I say, I'm willing to help out however in which that I can. But what a great set Thank you. from you guys tonight. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. We, we, me and Bondi were talking about this the other day. Like, um, since, you know, having all these meet and greets, we got a lot of people telling us how many that they started a band because of it so it's strange isn't it it's exciting it's quality it happened just there and it, that that sort of means more than anything really because it makes you, it reminds you of when you were in that same point you know yeah. i mean that's the high i mean is that that's like the highest honor yeah well, I, we, I would think yeah that like being told by somebody that you've admired or hearing hearing like just a crowd member say that oh, I met my girlfriend because of this, or this reminds me of that, or do you know things that the songs have touched people in some kind of way? Just to make people get up and feel something is, is, is what the, uh, the goal was, the aim was, so it's good to hear it, the feedback is that. Well, yeah. we, got a, we got a bunch to chat with you about, but you know, you're one of those bands, you know, the people have a lot of positive things to say. You know, these guys are on the verge of, and all that kind of stuff, which is, which is great Thank you. and a great honor, but you know, there's some responsibility. That's a little daunting when, when, when somebody has that kind of high expectations. How do you sort of appreciate it, but then not like let it, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like how yeah, do you yeah. sort of handle that kind of thing? Uh, I guess you, it's, it's always been simple for us because we've always been a band about just the songs, you know, it's always been as easy as just write good songs, deliver them, like, you know, year in, year out, you know, keep trying to be consistent, give consistent performances and stuff. It's just all about being a band, you know, I think a lot of other people deal with it differently because they don't quite get it, you know what I mean? It's really simple if you keep it the way we started, which was just playing because you love music. You know, we write songs because we love it. We, we, we wake up, sit and listen to music together all day, go on stage, buzzing, come off stage, put music back on. It's simple, really, you know. It's just if, all we've got to do is deliver good songs consistently for people, so, and we like doing that, so it's... I think as a band, walk. we sort of very much exist within our own bubble as well, and like the sort of pressures and things don't really get through that we just sort of do our own thing anyway and yeah. it would be the same regardless of whatever pressures there's never there's never really pressure when it's this you, you see the reaction so you know good exciting everyone's so excited about it so it, you come on there's no pressure because everyone's beaming don't nobody's sat there like that you know like ever, when when we come out now we've picked up a bit of a fan base it's it's easy it's just uh like go, we, it's as easy as going to bed for us it's just the best feeling in the world you know it's it's quality. Good now, crack. Very so good, for, good laugh. When, I didn't mean to interrupt you no, now. No, when, no. when we had you back in town, or back, at, back earlier in the year, you know, you were already talking then about the second album. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've heard some things. I've, I've heard that you're in L.A. when you can and, and recording there. And I also heard, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, that you wrote the album in a weekend? Yeah. That's, well, like I was saying to you about... How, yeah, yeah. It's Seriously, that's incredible. It's, it's just, we, we love it. We know, when you know exactly what you want, you know, the songs just fell, fell out. The, the thing was, I always had Dave Sardi, the guy who's producing it. I always had him as the idea to, for the second record, even when we were kids and we were back in the van. And we, we didn't even have an album together. The first one, I was going, this guy should do our next one, you know, when we were playing Sardi records. So I wrote all the demos with a little clip at the start saying, Dave, I want this one to be a bit like this, you know, sound a bit like the phonics at the end or this at the end or whatever. And sent them to him and he just, he'd not been inspired by a band for ages, just been saying no to loads of records. And he got this, these 11 tracks and went, flew, flew over to England. I, I wrote in a weekend, he's learned it in a weekend. He flew over to London, heard it, flew back two days early because he was convinced. And yeah, we're away now. Any week we get, we, we just keep putting, adding bits on. So it'll be done, you know, after this, straight after this tour. So, I mean, do we have any kind of timeline uh, as far as when, when we, we might hear it? I don't mean to well, be greedy, but no, I'm really kind of ready. <laughs> Only because of strategy. It's, um, you know, label strategy and stuff. It's good for us because we, we had a staggered release last year where it was, we did the album in the UK and then it came out in America. But this year, the label is getting so excited about it that they're joining together and they're going to release at the same time. So I think, you know, not too, not too long after the new year, really quick, you know, we're going we're gonna to try and keep coming, coming quick with the albums every year. Uh, Every, every two years, something like that, deliver an album every year like or two. It's like our bands did, you know, you were talking before about um, 
how, how easy it is. It's just we know the gap that we were missing as music fans. You know, we used to go to all these shows and these meet and greets. Lo we love it. You sit there for hours. People come in and asking for sign stuff. It's quality. So it's too it's too good of a life to get be feel pressure from it. You know what I mean? It's too it's bliss. It's quality. It's just great. I've, I've been good dying. Crack. I've been dying to ask you guys about this since I saw the video. Uh, I am a huge like almost sort of like on the borderline of fanatical like Ewan McGregor fan. I mean, dude was Obi-Wan, for God's sake, which is yeah. enough for me. But, I mean, he w was in the video for you guys and, and did such a great job singing the track. How yeah. did that all come about? Did uh, you, I mean, I guess one of your management guys obviously goes to his management and all that sort of thing. But uh, it, it's kind of, it kind of started with uh, us needing a video for Kathleen. And obviously, back then, we had no budget or anything. So Van knocked together a compilation of Ewan McGregor laughing, pretty much. And it, it, I, I don't know, I guess fans must have sent it on Twitter and stuff, and he ended up getting in contact with us. And I don't really know what happened then. We met him in New York for breakfast, because yeah. he just he became a fan somehow <laughs> through that. But That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing, too, I, I would yeah. think. You know what I mean? It was, um, it was just weird going across, like, you know, looking across uh, the breakfast place and seeing you, McGregor was the one that was flagging you over, do you know what I mean? Hey. We're right here. You just used to one of us going, we're sat here, mate, but it was Jewin, and we're like, shit. Let's have a look in the film, you can't swear on the video. Oh, it's all right. No, we're not live. We can edit it in post. Yeah, it was great, but he's really, we always say he's the most interesting and interested guy we've ever met. He was so, all he wanted to talk about was music with us, and all we wanted to talk about was, you know, lightsabers and train spotting, you know. Right. Big Fish. Have you seen Big Fish? Oh, that's that's absolutely That's the reason why I love him. I love it. What's such an amazing movie? That's one of those movies that uh, you know you can watch a million times in yeah, a row yeah. and, and never get tired of it. Story I just showed telling. it to my daughter for the first time, and that was that. A huge my dad showed it me, and he used to tell me stories about my granddad, so it's very like you know familiar to me. I love it. That's awesome. All right, so let's do this. I want to go through the line. I want to talk to everybody about Sweet. this particular last question, and then I'm gonna let you guys go and enjoy your evening. A lot has happened since we've seen you earlier yeah. in the year. Lots of festivals, yeah. lots of shows. Give me a highlight. And you can, you can take a second to think, because I know being put on the spot is never an easy thing, but just something that like sticks out as a, oh my God, I can't believe, yeah. or just, a, you know, just something that was really, really cool that's happened yeah. somewhere along the way. Well, I feel it might be the same for all of us, but like the wedding in Leeds back at home, I'm glad I, you asked me first, because I've got dips on that one now. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to say wedding in Leeds, just because it's so big for us at home. You know, it's kind of a... I don't know, it's the one. What the kind one. of crowd are you playing to when, when, when you're playing those? What was the tent like? Uh, 25,000? It was something ridiculous. And then it was splitting out, you know, out the sides. And so, uh, yeah. Bizarre. That's what I heard, because the tent was packed, and then there was, like, still, like, they thought, yeah. like, 10,000 people outside of the tent. Yeah, so what, we had loads of, like, complaints on, on Twitter and that, saying, like, we couldn't even hear you. We were stuck outside the tent. It was like, you know, it's not our fault. They thought it was on that side. Is it? Ne you next year. I mean? All right. Um... I'm sort of torn between two things that it's sort of achievement wise. I love to go into Japan earlier in the air and sort of seeing what goes on, what, what has been going on there because you don't really, you're not really aware of it in, unless you're actually in the country. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was really nice. And um, also we did a, a support tour with the, the Kooks in February in Australia and that just felt like a holiday. Yeah. It, was, it was so like relaxed. It was a gig, two, three days off, getting to go to beaches and things like that. It was. That was a really great time, so between them two. Yeah, not to mention the kooks are flipping fantastic on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah. The, the, the new stuff, they're proper grooving. Like we had a well, just perfect for where we were playing amphitheaters in Australia. It's good. Um, my one, just I, I think recently going out, we had a month in LA with Sardi, you know, we got out there and that going to his house and we're just recording, knowing, knowing what we're onto and Everyone's so, because none of the label have heard it. Nobody's heard it except us for our little crew and stuff like that. And our little close Nick is so excited, but everyone else is just hearing what we're telling them. And we're like, it's going to destroy the last album. It's gonna, you're going to be embarrassed about that band you signed. I can't believe you signed those when you had this band. Coming, you know what I mean? Like, so we're, uh, just the idea of knowing that what we've got in that little, in, in, well, not little, but his, his, his place in LA, we were cooking up something good there. So it's, I just keep waking up with this feeling of like, we've got, I feel like we're a support band, and the band that we're about to come out as is the headline band, and our our fans are acting like we're we're an arena band now. You know the way they they react at the gig, so it's just exciting for us to see where it could go. Yeah, now. absolutely so. Uh, I'd say other than Red and Leeds, like Bob said, I'd say Glastonbury was a highlight just because of 
how we managed to pull it off with Van and Bondi with ill with food poisoning and it was like all the gear was broken because it started raining the second we got on stage and that but seeing the reaction of the crowd even despite that and then the reaction online you know it kind of it was like the most shared act or something like that it was just like the fact that in our heads it was a mess and that everyone else you know didn't even notice that was that was something pretty cool well that that is awesome i i'll tell you what you know ever since the the, the firebird show earlier in the year I've been waving the flag of catfish in the bottle man as high and as loud thank as, you, as I humanly possibly can. And I really look forward to uh, to the next album. Mate, thank catfish you very much. In the bottle, thank, you, thank you very much for your Pleasure. time. Backstage, thank you. Point Big Summer Show number five.